Hello everybody and welcome to episode 38. That's right, we are still going strong. Um, by my estimate, we'll finish somewhere around episode 50. It's looking like that's roughly where we're going to end up finishing. Maybe give or take an episode, maybe a few less, maybe a few more. We'll see how it goes, but I think there's roughly, yeah, something like 12 more to go, um, including this one. So today what we're going to be looking at is item drop lists, essentially, and getting... Uh, the bonds that we can now use to also be a droppable item alongside our coins. Um, so the first thing I need to do for that is I'm going to bring in a new sprite for our bomb um, that's uh, a little bit smaller than the, the massive one we have. We've already seen it as its icon. Um, okay, I think it's just called S Bomb Drop. Yeah, S Bomb Drop is just this little icon. Um, we obviously have it in S Item UI. Um, here, but that's got like space around it and an origin in the corner just for you know drawing it neatly to the UI and also has all these other frames going on. So it's helpful to just have a separate one that we can put the origin in the bottom center. Um, I just dragged it there, but you can also just set it from up there, obviously. Um, nothing else about it matters, the FPS and whatever is irrelevant. Uh, make sure to name it as well S Bomb Drop. And our sprites really disorganized. I should really have to start putting these into folders, but I'm just trying to keep things focused on the important um, things for each episode. Um, anyway, yeah, get that sprite uh, named and set up, and then we can move on to making a new collect function for um, bombs. So I'm going to come down to wherever I put that collect functions here. You remember this collect coins for uh, when we increase. Um, where we increase our money when we pick up coins. And we're gonna make a new one called function collect ammo. All right, and that, that can be for any particular item. So uh, rather than just put the amount in though, I'm gonna to have to put underscore array as the argument that we pass to this. And uh, I'll just write a comment to remind us what it'll be and to inform you as well initially. Uh, array equals uh, type uh, comma amount. All right, I'll put the underscore there as well. Okay, so we're gonna send an array every time we call this that's gonna contain the item type and the item amount. Um, now, you might be wondering, well, why not just do those as the arguments, right? Why not just have type and amount? Well, that comes down to the setup for this, right? If we come back to our P collectible and variable definitions, and we scroll down here, the way this is set up is we call a script and an argument. Uh, now we could have multiple of these variables and say like, oh, if it has a uh, collect script arc uh, one and, and if it collect arc, uh, script arc two, and if they both don't equal minus one or whatever, then do both arguments. But that gets a bit more complicated. The simplest, uh, more elegant way to do it for, uh, for my money uh, is to do one argument. And then if you need to pass in more, simply pass this as an array and have the function sort of deal with that array. Okay, just makes it makes it a little bit more versatile and easy to work with in my experience, okay? Um, so that's the way I'm doing it. So we've got this function that sends through this uh, array or takes in this array and we're gonna do global.playerAmmo open square bracket array entry zero, which is the type, close square bracket again, plus equals array one, which is the amount, okay? So we take the item type and we increase its ammo by the amount. Then we need to actually make our bomb droppable item, okay? So I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna be fairly similar to Ocoin, so similar that I'm just gonna duplicate Ocoin, which is just another child of P collectible. Uh, and we're gonna rename it O bomb drop, set its sprite to be um, S bomb drop, go into the variable definitions, uh, come right down to the bottom here and where we have uh, collect coins in one. We just want to say collect ammo and then in an array that's item dot bomb and then a comma and one. Okay, so we get one of item bomb. Now that that's done, we can actually test that. Um, so let's come to our village and decorate uh, the instances layer with a few bomb drops. And if you remember, we have five at the start, so I'm going to spawn in here. Oh, it's doing the weird thing again, where it's like not caching the art immediately. It's just a game maker bug. If that happens, you just ignore it, just run again, and it should be fine. Don't know what the deal with that is. It's possibly something because I'm using the beta version. Who knows? Um, 
But either way, I can just run into these now and you see the number perks up when we collect them, okay? 8, 9, 10. All right, so uh, get rid of those if you, you place them alongside me. Obviously, we don't we don't want them to just lie around everywhere. I mean, you can put them in just like that. Um, but we want them to appear dynamically when we um, when we break plants apart. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to come to uh, O Plant and go to the Create Event. And you remember this, it's Drop List, which is just um, an array of coins, which just means it's going to drop three coins every time it's destroyed. How do we make this um, randomized? Um, well, the simplest way, and actually, like, it's limited and works best with smaller scope games, but like, it's honestly like a fairly effective solution. It's just simply uh, have a drop list where you just write choose, um, and then open and close a pair of brackets, regular brackets, and then we just write in different entries that we want to be possibilities. So our first possibility might be O coin, just one coin, and then a comma. Uh, our second possibility. Uh, might be two coins, so O coin, O coin. It needs to be an array either way, remember? So just uh, uh, open it in square brackets to declare an array. So a de an array with one entry, that's just O coin. Then an array with two entries, that's two O coins. Uh, again, a comma. And then maybe O bomb drop. Um, maybe it just drops a bomb. And then maybe a bunch of minus ones. Um, so a pos possibility of it just dropping nothing at all. Okay, remember if it's minus one, it won't drop anything. Um, just for the way we'd, we'd set that up, remember when, when we do the drop item stuff, okay? Um, what choose will do is it's just going to fill this literally when the item, when the, when the plant gets made, so it's, it's determined immediately. Um, uh, it'll decide, it'll just pick one of the entries that we put into the choose function at random, okay? So... Um, because of that, we can just control how likely something is or isn't by including um, uh, multiple copies of it. So, like, we can increase the chance of a coin by including multiple of it. Because it just depends how many of a thing exists in relation to other things. So here, because there's six entries and three of them are a, a minus one or drop nothing, there's a 50% chance that nothing will drop. Okay. And then of that 50% chance, I don't know, I just split that into three. There's a, there's a one-sixth chance uh, that it'll drop a coin, a one-sixth chance that it'll drop two coins, and a one-sixth that it'll drop um, drop a bomb, right? And uh, it's a little, like, fiddly, like, trying to, like, manipulate the numbers around like this, but uh, I actually find it a, a, one of the simplest, most visual ways of controlling, like, uh, drop table chances and stuff with multiple items that can drop. It's more complicated than you might imagine, because it's hard to say, like, okay, I want a coin to have a 25% chance of dropping. What, every time? Like, you know, like, uh, does that mean it all, like, there's a chance of that 25% chance happens, um, but also the 30% chance of a bomb happens? Like, how do those chances affect one another? Can they drop at the same time? It can actually be quite complicated. So I actually like this method of creating simple drop lists like this because um, I find it very easy to control. Um, I especially like it for if it's like a jam environment or something like that where I've got to go fast. It's very quick and easy to prototype and play around with. So we can just try that out now. Um, if I just press F5, when I start breaking these plants, you see that one dropped nothing at all. This one dropped a coin. Um, that one dropped nothing. That one dropped a coin. Come up here. Uh, I, that one dropped nothing. That one dropped a bomb. Nothing. Bomb. I think I dropped a coin because that went up. So it's just hard to see. Um, a lot of these are turning out to just be nothing, but we'll get a lot more in here. There you go. You can see every now and again bombs dropping. Every now and again coins dropping. Sometimes multiple coins. Oh yeah, I forget the little plants don't do anything right now, right? Because we just changed uh, the, the normal plant. So you see bombs, coins, and so on. And we can play around with those chances all we want just by sort of changing how this works. Hey, one thing you might want to do is come to O plant, uh, O plant B rather, if you've included this, just the, the other variation of plant, and just make that a child of, um, instead of being a child of P entity, just make it a child of O plant, since O plant is the same type of, is also a parent, uh, also a child of P entity anyway. By making it a child of that, it'll just inherit the drop list as well, so it has the same drop list as that. So fundamentally the same thing. Uh, and then you might want to copy this and also bring it into O slime. You remember it's also like is is P enemy, but P enemy is P entity. So slimes can also drop items. So we can go into the create event of the slime. And just at the bottom here, include an entity drop list. 
Uh, maybe we'll remove the, the chance of nothing dropping. Um, so something will always drop from the slime. But then simple as that, because we've used this like nice inheritance structure of different objects all inheriting from P entity, they all share that behavior. And so when I kill the slime, a coin drops now. And if I kill him again, probably the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Going to drop something out. Drop something else. Yeah, two coins. There we go. That's something more interesting. Um, but the other thing you can see is our, our our interface is working as well. So the bombs are going up as we use as we get more of them. If I use up all bombs, count down to zero. Can't can't do bombs anymore. Cut the grass for a bit. Don't find any more. But ugh, I'm sure you believe me. If we found more bombs, we'd be able to use them. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so that's the end of that. Um, as I say, it's fairly straightforward uh, once you, you break it down into separate parts, but um, I had to break all this item stuff down into separate parts because there are so many moving parts of it. Imagine if, like, like I know these episodes have been kind of short by comparison to some of my other ones, or they feel like they have. I'll probably edit these and realize, oh no, actually they're 20 minutes a pop. But uh, um, they, they, they felt me recording at least to be very short and a bit straightforward, but like if you then try and imagine all three like episodes 36 through 38 all as one episode it's a little bit much like a little bit all over the place all at once okay um so i wanted to break it down um, into these smaller chunks for you all anyway uh that's it for this episode thank you all very much for watching i'll catch you all on episode 39 a shout out in particular and in no particular order to the following max m Raildor, bowser the dog seanathan james grimley robert churches daka dondigo bertie t relentless rex jason dark rider 0318 rupinda rene dam samir nia ligaglow yoran pater cabbage pants figgy kaiser ho reva for paleon andrew gilbert jason welch phil keen vacants jordan hake john c feral princess arctics rachel stewart it's matt poor Stephen Shenier, John Keenai, Michael Kolich, Julian Cropley, James Ballard, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Harvig, Tranquil, Jake Rumsey, Darth Wolf, Isaac Miller, Gary, Sean Paul, Eric Santana, Adrian.exe, Josh Furbin, Mankind One, JD O'Dea, Patrick Scheiss, Jiminy Whippets, Timothy Hairblunt, BSE, Troy Nall, and Adrian. Thank you all so much for your support and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.